Hey, welcome back, Knife Nerds and Everyday Care people. It's your boy, the Big Connector, and I have got myself a knife that I have been wanting to have one of these in my pocket for years since I started collecting knives, and this is the first time I've had a chance to uh, get one. And uh, this may give you a little bit of a hint, a little bit of a surprise. It is, dun, 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 dun. some would say the Pinnacle ZT knife, the ZT. 0562 and this one happens to be the double tie version with the the tie show scale as well as the tie lock bar scale and i gotta say boy oh boy i am pretty damn impressed with that knife before we get to that though please please just want to give you guys a heads up don't forget to uh subscribe as well as uh like and share this video i appreciate it so much and also don't forget there's a little heart button down there with uh the opportunity to uh throw a little something my way here to help this channel get going appreciate it very very much all right well let's uh let's move on with this excellent excellent piece of of uh knife can engineering uh, okay here is the the zt box that it came in you know just a nice big zt box um there's a little bit of stuff inside there i wish that it had had uh, a a soft-sided case though this is a really premium item and you know it shows up in a cardboard box this is right from factory and it comes in bubble wrap and there's some uh some material here at the bottom about maintenance and stuff like that which is you know excellent you, you, you definitely want to have that but i was a tad disappointed in the fact that there was no soft-sided case uh this here in canada at uh, warriors and wonders is a 468 dollar knife uh, in the in the good old U.S. of A., it's three hundred and twelve dollars. Uh, at um, I think it's Blade uh, HQ. So I mean, it's it's an awful price to pay for a knife. But I wish it had a little bit more accoutrement when it got here. That's one of my biggest knocks right off the bat. The other thing right off the bat is this was I ended up doing a trade for a knife and got two ZTs, and I was a little bit disappointed that it wasn't really lubed very well the, the gentleman that i bought it from bought it it was kind of a catch and release for him he never really used it and it just sounded really tight and a little bit squeaky and so since then you know i, I sharpened it uh the sharpening sharpness was okay uh the uh but uh, it was a little bit dry out of the box so that's just something i don't know if everybody's zts are going to be like that or just perhaps this one but i gotta say other than that, I am absolutely loving this knife. A little bit of size comparisons here. If we're going to compare, of course, we got to compare against a Rick Hinderer because this is a Hinderer, uh, Rick Hinderer designed uh, ZT. Now, this happens to be a uh, Spanto bladed XM18 skinny. So it's a little bit thinner here with the micarta scale on it. And of course, I've got something here, which is a Rick Hinderer Eclipse. So, I mean, these happen to be the uh, Spanto uh, blades, where uh, this one happens to be the Rick Hinderer slicer, uh, the Rick Hinderer slicer blade. And I got to say, I am loving that slicer blade. It is a, I mean, it is an absolute slicer. I've broken down so much cardboard with this blade. And um, another little comparison here is a uh, Paramilitary 2 from Spyderco. This happens to be kind of the, when you're, Doing a lot of comparisons, it seems to be that you get the you know the ZT compared against the Hinder, of course, but also the ZT 0562 um, tie against uh, this uh, uh, this uh, paramilitary two seems to be the most comparisons that I've got. Now I am going to eventually be doing a comparison of head to head against the XM 18s and perhaps even the Eclipse, but let's just kind of go over this right off the bat, okay? Let's uh. Let's go with uh, uh, here, uh, specifications here. We have got ourselves 20 CPM, CPM 20 CV steel, which is primo top of the line steel. It's got good edge retention, great edge retention. It's tough, it's stainless. Um, it is one of the highest rated steels, I think out there in, in, in review land. Uh, nobody should be dissatisfied with uh, CPM 20 CV. I think it's very similar to like M390. I mean, it just seems to be the steel, the flavor of the month too as well. And this knife here is, this knife here is really, really long in the tooth of the design. I mean, I think this is, knife has been out there for about eight or nine years. The, the 0562 first came out from uh, ZT and it had, you know, a G10 scale titanium and it was, you know, 280 bucks or 265 bucks or so when it first came out. Pretty penny, but not so much as a original Hinder was, you know, Hinder was like a you know, 500 bucks. So 
you know, for almost a little bit more than half the money, you can get yourself a very, very equivalent knife. And a lot of people thought that the ZT0562 was better than the equivalent XM18 uh, Z uh, hinderer. And I don't think that's the case now. I, I absolutely love my hinder knives. They are two of the best knives that I, I own. And this here is right up with them though, for sure. I am so happy with this. Now the blade length here is 3.5 inches long. Now the thickness is uh, 0.156. And I do believe that's, uh, I think that's four mil uh, or 156 here. One, I had it here up, 156. Yeah, 3.9 millimeters, so it's darn close to uh, to four millimeters. It's a really thick, beefy uh, uh, blade. Now it's kind of a brushed, uh, a, a brushed look here too as well. With a, it's got kind of a two tone blade, and the the milling on there is really really sharp. Uh, there's no, I know a lot of times you can see knives that are like say the Kershaw, which is the the ZT kind of. Uh, uh, less expensive brand and the you know the, the grinding on it is not even on both sides and maybe the edge is a little bit wobbly or stuff like that no problems with the fit and finish on this zt whatsoever the grind is even on both sides it came deadly centered i mean there's no issues with the centering with it whatsoever and i love i love the zt sound but let's keep on going here all right 3.5 inch blade uh the with a hardness of between 60 and 62 We've got stone wash finish with a satin grinds. Uh, there we go. Uh, blade thickness is uh, 0.156 inches or uh, 3.9 3 millimeters, just a smidge under four. Close length is 4.8 inches, which is, uh, you know, a, a great size. Fits in the pocket really, really well. A little bit of a Nick Chabaz packa packa out there. Uh, the handle color is silver titanium on both sides, and it seems like it's a really... Um, uh, you know, it's a really finely finished titanium. They've really smoothed this out and not to the point where it's shiny, but it is so smooth. And it seems like it's kind of a polished stone wash. I really, really love it. I mean, this is not the knife to have if you're working in a Vaseline factory. It, it will be slippery as hell, but it, it feels so, so nice. I mean, I love things that are very smooth. I love things that are, you know, great finish. And this is a great finish titanium. Um, yeah, stone wash finish here. The handle thickness here is 12.7 millimeters or half an inch. Uh, overall length is 8.3 inches or 21.1 centimeters. And this is a really surprising thing. It is 5.3 ounces. I've got some titanium knives, like some titanium scales, like for like a Mannix 2. And when I put the titanium scales on that Mannix, and they're just flat titanium, it really makes that thing feel like a tank. Where this one, they if we crack this open, you'll see inside there, they've milled this out, this scale out so much that it's really, really light. You know, at 5.3 ounces, it is not crazy heavy at all. Now, there is no um, lanyard hole, which is a huge thing for me. I love lanyard holes. There is a standoff on the back here. It, and I end up having, this is an old, or not old, this is a, I came, this came from Civivi this little uh, lanyard and I just kind of tied it on the this the, the, the last uh, standoff now I've tried putting a leather standoff on there but the leather seemed like it was a little bit too thick and when it closed it was very quiet it kind of muffled it and I didn't like that so this seems to close it's got that click sound to it which is so gorgeous with the ZT and this um, lanyard on the back here tied to this back standard standoff with this thin type of uh, material is way way better it's not quite a uh, paracord but it's almost like a paracord like a really flat paracord and that gives you more than enough it may have cut just a smidge but i really really dig the fact that i've been able to put a lanyard on here even if it doesn't look as good as it sh should it, it allows me to draw this out of my pocket so much easier now the reason you want to have that kind of drawn in is because it has a really excellent deep clip um, clip here this is a great clip it, it grabs a hold of the pants like nobody's business I've got no worries about this whether I'm wearing shorts or whether I'm wearing jeans this is not going to come out of the pocket now it is as deep carry as you can get because the clip is mounted from the inside it's not bolted on the outside oh of course oh <laughs> Of course, there's my. I apologize for that, folks. My phone's going off as well as my iPad. Both of them are ringing. That's actually 
the uh, Give Blood. Uh, I'm actually AB positive, so I am uh, I'm tasked giving lots of blood because just in case, just a little bit of a PSA here, folks. If you are AB positive blood, you are the universal donor for plasma. And in Alberta right now, in Lethbridge, they are not just giving, or you're not just giving blood. They, what they want is plasma. And if you've got cancer or if you're having open heart surgery, they're going to use a ton of plasma and you will be more than, um, more than uh, doing somebody, saving a life. If you're AB positive, Get your butt down there and give blood or give plasma. And I am going to be finishing this off and phoning them and setting up my appointment because I try to give plasma as much as I can. And here's my big old dog bugging me right now too. I'm going to close the door of my office. Can't get any more interrupted here in this video. <laughs> life, life happens, folks. All right. Oh, uh, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Oh, what's the clip? Excellent clip. Now you'll also notice on this side of the uh, uh, of the knife, you've got two different things. You've got an over travel stop here, and you've got another one here on this lock bar insert. Now because this is titanium, and when you get titanium and 20 CV or any sort of hard steel uh, meeting, you can get yourself some lock stick. And sometimes on some of the really big honking bladed knives, a little bit of lock stick is not the end of the world. But when you want a really smooth open and closed knife, um, this seems to be the way to go. Now the lock up here is about 20%, maybe 25%. So and so there's, you know, it has a lot of room to grow. grow and this lock bar insert will not... Um, Will not wear like titanium will now the other thing that there was a lot of people were concerned about early on in zt's uh life was lock geometry i, I watched some videos of people you know hitting the back of their zt's and all of a sudden this would let go and it would you know close up on people i i think they've solved that lock bar geometry i haven't heard of that happening for some years and just to say you know it's not um out of the realm of possibility that you could get a ZT like that, but I haven't heard about it for a, a long, long time. Now you've got a uh, some black uh, stainless steel construction here and all your screws, and you've got a little bit of design on both your pivots. Now your pivots here, there's no locking pivots, so you'll need two, uh, I think these are T8 uh, screws to, uh, or screwdrivers to uh, adjust your pivot, but I mean, you, you shouldn't. I mean, this came right from the factory. It, you know, it's drop shutty when, when the pivot is, uh, it's drop shutty when the, um, when the, the lock bar is pressed, but just normally it's a little bit shaky shut right now. And I, I imagine over time that's going to wear just a little bit because, you know, out of the box, the uh, ZT or the hinders are dialed right in. They are just beautiful, beautifully, oh, oh sorry, I'm holding on to the lock bar. They're beautifully uh, uh, drop shutty. And I mean, just just a tiny bit of a shake this one here is even more the skinny is just dialed right in and i, I imagine that's going to happen with this knife eventually as it wears in a little bit more i mean i could do a little bit of adjustments on it right now to probably make it a little bit less uh, a little bit more drop shutty but hey i don't mind this thing wearing in and becoming just a little bit looser over time uh there's no side to side or anything like that it's beautifully tough excellent knife uh, now one of the other I guess the only real kind of knocks I have is I, I wish it had a dedicated lanyard hole like the XM18 even if it's on the back like that I perhaps may get that drilled for myself I have a couple of really good friends who are uh, machinists and I might get them to put a lanyard hole in there if it's not going to hit the blade uh, if I can get away with it, I might have it done in this to customize it a little bit. And I think the other thing I might do with this is perhaps do a little bit of anodizing as it is just a little on a smidge on the boring side. I mean, uh, just straight uh, silver titanium, you know, that's excellent. I don't mind the smoothness, although, you know, it is a really, really incredibly tough knife. The jimping on the back is, is so nice. You don't have that back jimping here like on the XM18. This XM18... Uh, it does get a little bit, you know, I'm flicking it. It does bother me a little bit on the, 
on the finger there it can wear them a little bit where you don't have it on here and it just lead, lends to the fidget factor being out of this world with this knife i love carrying this knife since i've gotten this it has not left my pocket despite it being almost four mil this slicer ground is a excellent excellent slicer i'm gonna have to give this probably you know like a nine and a half out of ten and i'm gonna lose just a smidge for the fact that there's no lanyard hole and that's one of my things i love having a lanyard hole i love every single one of my knives has to have a a lanyard tied to it uh just because i like drawing it out of my pocket that way it's so much better now i hope you guys enjoyed yourself please please i want you guys to stay safe out there please please keep your stick on the ice oh the shiny side up this is the big connector saying adios